What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the farm. So this morning I am going to be working on, I'm putting together a PVC watering system for the chickens. So I'm going to be using PVC pipe and poultry nipples to build a couple big watering stations. I'll put one in each run and so I'll have something that'll hold significantly bigger volume than the little one gallon waterer that I have right now. And the weather hasn't really even gotten that hot yet and they're getting through that gallon just about every day. So this will just be uh, make it a little, a little less maintenance out there for me. So I'm going to load all my supplies up into the truck and I'm going to head over to my dad's house. His shop's a little bit more conducive space-wise to being able to lay out all these big pipe pieces. So we'll see you over there in a minute. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to drill all my holes for all of my nipples. So what I did is I went down the pipe here and I made a mark every foot. So I'll drill all my holes in the top here and then... I'll come, I'll do the same with the next piece of pipe. Put it in this jig here to make sure it stays nice and straight, keep all the holes in just about the same place. So I came down first with a smaller drill bit. And I drilled myself a little pilot hole so when I come through here with this bigger 5 16 bit, I can make sure that I'm a little more precise. with my drilling, because the bigger bit, it's a whole lot easier to dance around. So that's why I came through with the small one first and gave myself a little pilot. Now that my holes are drilled, I'm gonna come through with this little sanding block and I'm gonna knock all the burrs off. There is a little rubber seal here on the nipple. So we're gonna to try to knock these burrs off to help try to ensure that that seal can do its job. So now that I got all my holes drilled, I'm coming through with this tap and I'm cutting the threads in that the nipples will screw into. And all of this is specified when you buy your nipples, it should come with a little cheat sheet that'll tell you what size holes to drill and what size your tap needs to be. It says that they're supposed to be able to be self-cutting, that you should just be able to drill your hole and thread the nipple right into the pipe. Maybe if you have super hand strength or something, but I didn't have any luck with that, so we went ahead and found the right, the right tap for this and just make it a little easier. So after we get all these tapped out, we'll start gluing all of our joints together. I'll wait till the end to put the nipples in. I don't want to break them off when we got to move everything around. So next we'll do all our joinery, and then the last thing we'll do is we'll Teflon tape up all the nipples, and we'll screw those in. And then we'll give it a little pressure test, we'll put some water in it and see if we're leak free. So just to show you real quick, like I said, you know, eventually we'll, we'll Teflon tape these all up before we put them in for real. You see, once the, when the threads are cut, they screw right in, no problem. When you're doing all these PVC joints, start with the primer, and then you go with the glue behind it. slip together and it sets up pretty quick so make sure it's where you want it before you walk away or else you won't be moving it. You see we got the elbow installed, a little piece in the middle and then here is our two to four inch and then our big four inch reservoir will come up right here. Now that I got those joints on, what I'm doing is I'm taking my nipples and I'm wrapping the threads with Teflon tape to try to make sure, get this little washer out of the way, wrapping it with the Teflon tape to try to make sure that it doesn't leak. So this is what's going to help create a good seal when we thread these into the pipe. So give it a couple wraps of the tape, I'll trim and it's a little wide, so I'll trim 
can see it there. This little bit off the top and then thread it in. To the insides of these things, there is a little ball bearing in here that sits down in here. So when this plunger lifts, it's lifting up that ball bearing and that ball bearing cre is what creates the seal inside of this. So the water pressure holds the ball bearing down and when this uh, gets hit, it breaks that seal just a little bit. And then there's a plunger on top that's a secondary seal. So when that ball bearing gets moved, focus, that ball bearing lifts that other plunger and that's what lets the water come through just a little drip out at a time. So kind of inevitably, when you're working with plastic, one of them broke. So what we're going to use here is called, it's an easy out. Basically what it is, is it's a reverse thread drill bit. So you put it in your drill and run it backwards, and as it goes in and grabs a hold of it, it'll back it right out of there for you. So you can see the threads run reverse, you know, the opposite direction of a regular drill bit. So when you put your bit in reverse, as it bites into this, since it's spinning the other direction, as soon as it bites into that plastic, it starts spinning it the opposite direction of these threads, and it backs it right on out of there. So I've got two of them put together to this point. So you can see how we've got the reducer down there where it'll go from the four inch to the two inch and elbows down into this and then you can see we got all the little nipples installed. So I'm not going to cut that four inch piece until we go over and we install this inside the coop so I can get that cut as big as possible to create as big of a reservoir as possible. I don't know exactly what the, the head space is going to be for it. So we're going to wait till we get this hung up before we go ahead and make up that piece. We've teleported back over to my house. So we've got one of the waterers brought here into the coop and what we're going to try to do is, I'm not going to fill it up yet, I'm going to make sure that PVC glue gets dried all the way, but we're going to try hanging it up here. We're using these pipe hangers. So we'll attach these pipe hangers to the 4x4 here and there and then we'll be able to figure out down here, down here at this end where our 4 inch riser is going to be, that's where all of our weight's going to be. So that's kind of about where it's going to fall. So we'll have a hanger there and a hanger down there. We're going to have to come up with something to support from the ground here because that's where all of our weight's going to be because there's probably going to be four or five gallons held in just that four inch piece. So, you know, that's going to be 35, 40 pounds, something like that. So we attached our J-clip on this end. Now what we're going to do is we're going to put a level on it and then that's what will tell us where to put our clip down here. So if you want to come up just a little bit, Dad. A little bit more. Perfect. So now we've cut this four inch piece at I think it was like 44 inches. Not connected yet, the wind keeps blowing it over. So I'll be able to fill from the top here. You can see there's the nipples all the way down here. I think this is as far as I'm gonna get today. Um, I'm going to have to get some kind of metal band or something is going to go here. We'll use that to hold it up there and then probably going to have to cut a block of wood to sit underneath it here to carry all this weight because like I said, full this thing's going to weigh almost 50 pounds. But that's what it looks like. Well, it's been three or four days since I've been out here to work on the water so finally got some time this evening. So what I'm going to work on is I'm going to get the four inch riser glued in down here and then I'm going to get the foot uh, that's going to sit underneath it that's going to support all the weight of it. I'm going to put that in there and then maybe if time allows before it starts getting too late I might be able to pressure test it tonight. So we'll see how far we get. Just like we did with our other PVC pieces we're going to start with the primer cleaner. That goes on first. And then we'll come back with the glue, put the glue on it, and we'll slip it right in there. And now the glue. A little 
angle on both sides won't hurt. Slip her on in there. Hey, Mr. Pablo. Did you come out to help? Did you come out to help? Come here. Yeah, right, Dad. So I've got some of that metal banding that I was talking about. Um, this was normally you would use is it would hang pipes kind of from joists. So you know, it would come up high and a pipe would sit in it like this. I'm going to use it to hold the pipe tight to the wall here. And then I'll probably use another piece down at the bottom to tie it onto that foot once I get that foot cut. Now what I'm doing here is I have attached on this side and then I went all the way around the pipe 360 degrees so what I can do is I can pull it here and get good tension on it and when I screw this here it's really going to suck that pipe in tight to this block back here so there won't be any wiggle or uh, wobble, any weevil wobble when the wind blows and once the water's in it. That's not going anywhere. And what you can kind of accomplish once you've got your screws in, you've got it pretty tight. When you go to put a second screw in, this one here, it pushes this slack in and it really gets this just tight as can be. And you can see I did the same thing over on this side. When you shoot this screw in here, focus, when you shoot this screw in here, it pulls any little bit of slack that there might have been in this out. And so this is really, really solid now. We all know why you guys are really here. You want to see the ladies. What's up, y'all? Why is the door open? Are you feeding us? Hey, what's going on? Hey, hey. It's a poultry party. I got the foot put in. It kind of seems like it's going to be a little bit overkill, actually, now that um, I've got it all together. And this band up here, I was not able to get this pipe to budge at all. It's holding it so tight, but I still went ahead and, and put this post down here at the bottom and went ahead and put the band on it. The band is kind of just holding it in place, and then it's just sitting on the ground here. So I'm thinking I'm probably going to wait until tomorrow before I go ahead and put some water in it and do a little bit of a pressure test on it just to make sure that that glue can go ahead and get set up all the way. So we'll check back in sometime tomorrow. Well tomorrow has turned into today. I've carried out a few gallons of water, we'll dump them in here, we're do a little pressure test, see if all of our nipples are sealed up tight and make sure all our joints are sealed up tight, no leaks. Here goes nothing. Well, that was about two gallons, so that should have most of the most of the straight piece. Add a couple more just for good measure, and then we'll check it. Sounds like it's starting to fill up the riser. We're looking pretty good. I don't see any leaks at any of the nipples. I spilled some water down here. 
so there is a little bit of water down here, but I think that's all just from spillage. Same with it sitting here. I think that's all just from when I dumped it in at the top. But we're looking good. I'm going to let it sit for a little while, and we'll come back out, and we'll check it again here in a little bit. It's been about 45 minutes. I just double-checked everything. None of the nipples are leaking. None of the joints are leaking, so I'm going to go ahead and call it a success. Well, now that I've got that installed and it seems like it's not leaking, the, the easy part's probably over. Hopefully it won't be too difficult, but the next thing I'll have to do is try to get them trained using it. Uh, I've looked for suggestions online as to how people have taught them how to use the little poultry nipples. I've seen use a laser, you can shine a laser pointer on it. You know, they'll chase after a laser pointer, so you can shine a laser pointer on it. Put a little dab of peanut butter on it, you know, just something to attract them to it. Once one of them gets it figured out, then another will figure it out, and then eventually they'll all get it figured out, is what they say. And it seems like that's true so far. Uh, you know, they've done that with the roosting and some of the other things. Once one's figured it out, you know, it takes a little while, but they all sort of just slowly follow suit. So I'll leave the regular waterer in there for now, but eventually once they get it all figured out, I'll probably take that out just because it's a pain in the butt to keep clean and it's so small. It's just, you know, I'm filling it up all the time. So this will be much more convenient for me and hopefully they all get it figured out so they can start using it too. So what will happen is I'll switch them back in to the run. I got that installed in the run that they're not in right now. So this weekend I'll probably switch them back over and I'll install the waterer in the other run. And then hopefully when, once they get one figured out, doesn't matter which run they're in, they'll be able to switch back and forth. So this weekend hopefully we'll get to start training them on using it. So I guess that's going to be it for now, guys. Thanks for checking out the video. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Hit that bell icon so you get notifications of any of the new videos I got coming out here at Shinyata Farm. And we'll catch you guys next time. See ya!